All right, we've seen how important the atmosphere is and how it dictates the temperature. And we talked about earlier, heat in, temperature in, temperature out. So how do we actually then calculate through the heat and radiation what a temperature of an well, object is? Well, you can do a is? very simple calculation, simple to a physicist at least. <laughs> um, see our other courses, so details of this calculation. You basically look at how much sunlight intercepts, yep. assume something radiates uniformly in all directions, how much goes out, and the two will come into balance. The temperature will rise or fall until heat out equals heat in. Okay. And you can calculate that, and that's the green line in this graph. Okay, so the green line is if we have a certain amount of heat in at a certain distance, and then how that heat is coming out. Yes, yeah, so you calculate how much sunlight will hit something at a given distance. Yep. That sunlight spreads out more and more as you go further away, so it's going to be less unit area. Yep. And then work at how much you radiate away to balance that, and it gives a pretty good fit. I was going to say, there's actually, I mean, you know, the Earth is slightly high, but not Yes, yeah, so you've got two dots here for the Earth and the Moon, and yep. the Earth is actually about 20 degrees hotter than it should be, according to this. Okay. Um, but the two main exceptions are Venus is way hotter yeah, than it should yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, Venus is... Not even close to this line. And the Earth is a little bit too hot. Okay. So there's something going on here that means it's not quite as simple as heat in balances, heat out. Okay. Um, so here's the Earth's atmosphere. Let's put in the Earth first because we understand it best living on it and breathing it. Yep. And what you can do is you can look now, not just at the heat in the heat out, but what wavelengths of heat are coming in and heat okay. going out. Yes. Uh, now, in the stars course, we talked a bit about right. objects of different temperature radiating different amounts. The sun is very hot, about yep. 5,700 degrees, and that means it radiates mostly visible light. That's right. This is why our eyes work at these wavelengths, because it would be stupid if evolution had given us eyes that worked in a light wavelength where the, there was no radiation from the sun. Exactly. We get eaten by the tigers and not pass on the genes <laughs> for stupid wavelengths for eyesight. That's right. <laughs> so, this is a spectrum, and... Um, this is the blue is showing the light coming in from the sun, and it's mostly at visible wavelengths, about half a micrometer. Okay, yep. Now, the Earth is radiating. That's right. But the Earth's at only a temperature of you know, 14, 15 degrees centigrade on average, something like that. That's right. So much, much, much cooler than the 57. Because it's radi at these lower temperatures, it's radiating infrared radiation okay. rather than visible. That's right. Now, there's a common misconception that infrared is heat radiation and visible light is light. No. But they all carry heat. That's right, exactly. We think that because fires and electric bar heaters um, tend to be at a temperature of you know, 100, 200 degrees, and therefore they emit infrared. That's right. But in fact, all these forms of radiation carry heat, and we yes. certainly you feel the heat from the sun. That's it's right. It's not the infrared, it's the visible light mostly that's heating up from the sun. Okay, so you've got visible light coming in and infrared going out. Okay. Now, if you could block one and not the other, you could change the temperature. That's right. So if you could block the visible light coming in but let the infrared radiation go out... We would cool down. Yes. If, on the other hand, you could block the infrared from going out but let the, uh, the uh, optical light come in... We would heat up. And what you can see down here is what wavelengths can penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. Okay. And what you can see is that most wavelengths can't penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. They're actually blocked. Yeah, that's right. There's only a few small windows that the light actually makes it to the ground. Which are things that we as astronomers are very aware of because we have to tune all our telescopes to work in these wavelengths. There's no point in working in the far ultraviolet when the ozone layer stops the light getting through. You just exactly. see nothing. This is always my trouble with super, Superman's X-ray vision. X-ray light doesn't penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> doesn't do you much good, that's right. It's just bloody around in the dark. Unless you've got an X-ray torch. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, you could do that. I never thought of Superman needing uh, some uh, technical assistance, but the but Unless you're in a medical imaging lab, there are not going to be X-rays around to see. That's right. Okay, so what you can see down here is different chemicals and which wavelengths they block. Okay, so different elements or chemicals or molecules block different types and different wavelengths. That's right. Let's think about how this works. Okay. So here is a carbon dioxide molecule. So we have one carbon, carbon in the two. middle and two oxygen. Yep. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply light to it. Now light's an electromagnetic wave, yep. which basically means it's an electric field, okay. which oscillates. Okay. So an electric field is going to push upwards and then downwards and upwards and yep. downwards as the wave goes past. And it's going to pull the carbon and the oxygen in different ways. All right. Because they've got, it's a polarised molecule, that means there's electrical charge spread yep. differently across these things. So when you apply electric field to it, it's going to pull the uh, carbon in one way and the oxygen in another. Okay. So when we run the simulation, what I'm doing is you see the blue arrow over there is an alternating electric field. That's and so that's the light down. coming in, essentially. Yes. So as it goes past this molecule, it's actually making it vibrate, but it's really not doing very much. Yeah, okay. Now... 
let's change the wavelength and the frequency of the incoming radiation. Okay. So let's make it vibrate at a different rate. Yep. And now, as it vibrates, you can see it's, it's the, the, in particular the carbon is starting to really. Yeah, so what's happening yeah. at this particular frequency is it's doing something. Yeah, yeah, pushing in and out almost. That's right. If you change the frequency yet further, you can now get a different type of resonance. Okay. Which yep. is going something like this. Yeah, it's like one goes up, the two go down. It's yeah. lifting almost. So basically, there are three types of resonance you get, all of which have their own particular frequency. Oh, yep. You can get one like this, you can get one like this. And you can get one like this. I think these should be the latest hip dance yeah, moves it, 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 for astronomers. It, it, it seems like some sort of a new exercise this seems like regime. Some sort of Egyptian dance. That's I don't right. know. And I don't know what this one would be. This is a weightlifting dance. Uh, do and the this, carbon dioxide. This, dance. this one's the punch baddies dance or something <laughs> like this. And it turns out that these are responsible. You see, there's a bunch of wavelengths yep. that uh, carbon dioxide blocks radiation coming through, and each wavelength corresponds to one of these different dance moves. Oh, okay. All right. So these discrete periods are one of these different modes of the movement. Yes, and in particular on Earth this particular band here blocks a lot of the outgoing radiation. This is the one that's responsible for the greenhouse effect. So okay, so this... That's actually due to this mode. So the carbon dioxide moving this way happens to line up where we're emitting most of our infrared light and that is the heat that's supposed to come out to keep this equilibrium. So that's right. So what that means is that infrared radiation is trying to escape from the Earth out of space but it hits some carbon dioxide en route yep. and instead of continuing to fly out to space it makes the carbon dioxide do this dance. Okay. And the carbon dioxide probably bumps into other carbon dioxide it generally ends up heating up the atmosphere rather than escaping into space. So because of this perfect, not perfect, but because this is the, how the alignment works, the heat out is not actually heat out. That's right, it can't escape as much. Yep. So in fact, this particular dance of carbon dioxide is responsible for the fall of several Australian governments okay. and the entire global warming crisis. Now, you'll see that carbon dioxide blocks at a few wavelengths, but water vapour blocks at many more. It blocks a lot more. Um, so why does water do that? Well, here I'm showing you a water molecule. Now, yep. uh, oxygen with two hydrogen. Yep. And this, as you can see, it vibrates <laughs> all sorts. Of, I, don't, right, I don't even yeah. want to try this dark steps here. <laughs> this, is it. this is the new jazzercise, I think, for astronomers. <laughs> yes, so this does you know, lots of stuff. And that's why it absorbs at so many different wavelengths all over the place. So the more motion it's going, the more absorption it can do. Yes. And so what this means is by having an atmosphere with the right what? chemicals in it, including carbon dioxide and particularly water vapour, makes the planet warmer than it would otherwise be by trapping the infrared radiation but letting the optical light come in. Okay. So for example on the Earth, if it wasn't mostly for the water vapour on the Earth, um, it stops the radiation going out. This is why in a humid place the temperature doesn't drop much at night because there's lots of water vapour and that stops the radiation from escaping. Whereas a very dry place like the middle of outback Australia, That's right. the temperature could be you know, 40 degrees in the day and drop to 10 degrees at night because so much heat has escaped because there's so little water vapour it can just get away. So if we added more water vapour we would be a more humid planet and if we had less we'd be a more extreme planet. That's right. I mean, in fact if you took away the water vapour in the Earth's atmosphere um, for just one night, yep. the Earth would work up frozen solid, all of it, right down to the equator. So that much heat, that much energy would escape. Yes, so we're very glad we have this greenhouse effect on Earth. Without it, the Earth would be frozen in a single night. So we're actually lucky this dance is happening, as energetic as it is, to keep us relatively temperate. That's right.